Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Plenty with Sulu. Clothing partner G Flock, venue partner Department of Coffee. Be tuned to Daily Mirror and Lanka Deepa online. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Plenty with Sulu. Today we are going to discuss about medical tourism, health communication and mental health. And our guest today is Dr. Charuni Senanayaka. Hi Dr. Charuni. Hello, thank you for calling me for this uh, lovely program It's of a yours. privilege to have you. Thank Dr. You. Charuni, this is going to be a very informal discussion. Yes. Um, if I may I just ask you to do a self-introduction for our audience, can mm -hmm. you please? Yes, so Suresh and I work in the capacity currently as a departmental head of uh, Priority Health and Outreach Clinics Operation for Lanka Hospitals. Uh, I'm also a, a general practitioner, a life coach and uh, works also in managerial capacities. So that's very briefly about me. <laughs> so you became a doctor as a, you know, it's a dream of you or it's a family thing? It's actually a family thing. So like my father is a doctor, my grandfather is a doctor. So naturally the path was cut for me. But there were so many times that I tried, uh, I wanted to do many other things rather than being a doctor because I, it was there from the day one I was born, right? So I didn't find a new thing in it at the beginning. But uh, yeah, then uh, I tried a lot of things in my, to do, do a lot of other things and I've now come back again on to becoming a real doctor back again. <laughs> so you said you became a real doctor, <laughs> right? But your profile does not say you're just a medical doctor because your profile says you're a life coach and you promote on things that are rather than just a medication. Yes. You speak about holistic approach and yes. you speak about mental health, personality development, all that. So you are not just a doctor, you are beyond a doctor. Yeah, I believe so. Thank, I thank the, my life for giving me all those opportunities to work in all those capacities. So I'm privileged actually. Okay. So if I may ask you because, you know, you're in your profile, one of the key things it says is uh, health educator. Mm. What is, what means by health educator? Yeah, so this is one of the very concepts that's very close to my heart because I may be a doctor by profession, but I really believe in this holistic approach of to health. So when you when a person comes to me as saying certain symptoms, I know that behind those symptoms they declare to me, uh, not to mention the cultural background they operate in. There is always a story behind all that. There is a whole lot of uh, mental component in it. So maybe like up to 60% of what we hear behind that is another whole ball game. And as a doctor, I think as a skillful one, you have to be able to not only treat those little symptoms, rather the, you look into the real cause of the whole illness. So that is where you need a lot of exploration, you need a lot of time to talk to patients and that, uh, but then that itself will help a lot in terms of reducing their many visits to you. So I'm a doctor who's very happy if a person comes to me one time or two times and not even more than that. Because I, I believe then I have addressed the real issue of that person. So I think I really like to look at this as a whole holistic view in terms of treating a person so um, yeah so, so there because i remember when we were young there were doctors that you go and just when you visit them you you feel you're okay yes. but now there is a complaint that doctors they, before even a patient sits he write the prescription right now you say you need time to learn about the patient mm. and 
so that means we are going back because now many complaints about doctors you know the profession has commercialized mm. where you say you use the holistic approach so that the patient visit will be reduced and patient mentally will help them to uh, actually find the cure yeah that's right and uh, to give you a small example for example if somebody comes to me with gastritis symptoms so mm -hmm. let's say there's a burning sensation in the tummy you feel nausea you know you feel all these headaches and lots of other things but if you really explore behind that then either you will always find the person doesn't have breakfast in the morning they yes. they just skip it and come or they don't even have their own proper you know water intake they forget all that because we are so busy or there is another mental issue like you know a lot of stressful issue that they are going through in that during that time period so if you don't really look into that beyond those symptoms we'll just write a few you know medications and send them home and home right and they'll get a temporary cure but if you look beyond that you can obviously make even a lifestyle change you can give them some tips how to handle their current stress uh, they're having so i think those kind of things will really help the person get to the root cause of it and we can eliminate some of those or at least help them to alleviate that so i will call you are a new generation doctor where the patients are keen to meet you i'm happy that i'm <laughs> actually interviewing you then the Thank second you. one i'm going to ask because i have seen this medical tourism in other asian countries mm. but you're speaking about medical tourism what is it actually so to me my own way of looking at medical tourism is like sri lanka absolutely is a, in a position to offer this in a greater scale than what we are doing now yeah for one reason because we have a lot of very good doctors a very good healthcare system that is in par with all the world's international standards and we have very skillful doctors as well yes. right on top of it our labor cost the economy side is we can get all those things at a much cheaper prices as well right so and then on top of it we are like an island which has lots of you know tourist places you know like for many years people have loved to come to sri lanka so we have everything in one place and so actually it's a very good chance we can promote um, skillful labor also to other countries right so instead of all these non uh, skillful labor going out of our country so this is a chance where you can get many jobs for many skillful people pay better and and we have a lot of private healthcare system as well which is equivalently good and very competent so uh, i feel that uh, if we can also look into an expand Uh, into looking into medical tourism which means that people will come in uh, as a package so that you can obviously attend get attention to your medical needs as well as you know you can also look into integrating um uh, you know traveling around within the obviously uh, considering the amount of travel they can they are allowed yeah and also to see if uh, you can obviously have and have that both you know the fun aspect of it the attention and the care you need at the same time Uh, for yourself right and uh, in a in a lovely setting with such hospitality people right so i think it's a lovely opportunity for sri lanka if, and and it's an area i'm sure that tourism uh, industry has already spoken about and doing a lot of work on it's more on to the outbound and it's more about inbound medical right you're yes. talking about tourists come okay come they in. still can visit and still they why they can get medication and also they can get the health care because yes. our nurses and our i think we have a very skilled nurses yes and as you said our medical system is much talented and skilled compared yes. to other countries and our weather and also the nature itself is uh, help yes and also at the same time solutions we also have like medical clinics which is situated along with the you know five star hotels for example in yeah. sri lanka so yeah. you can reach up to a certain a bigger scale of tourists Uh, along with those partnerships right to capitalize on what we have in sri lanka also to you know like give, take it to the world standards and help all those people who really need and probably at a cheaper cost than getting that treated in singapore for example right yes with the same amount of care of cures yeah so that's an opportunity for sri lanka so i'm going to ask you like as a life coach what's your role are you When you say a life coach, are you a trainer or are you a life coach on people to come out from some situations medically and also from mental health? 
Yeah, that's a very good question. This actually a life coach itself is very simple, Slochna. It's somebody who will uh, talk to another person and then uh, will be able to get the answers that is within themselves. So we don't give answers out. But what we do is we help ask certain questions so that we will be able to funnel that through and get their answers from themselves. Okay. Because majority of the is people... Is it same as counselling or what you are talking about? Uh, so the counselling is equivalent to a archaeologist role. So you okay. go into the past and dig the past, help them to come to terms with it. Now a coach on the other hand is like a architect. So you are, uh, you are building in a, a structure uh, without even your being there. So you build it in the future and then you walk backwards. So it's more proactive, people are more wanting to take action. So you, we are doing a, a quick mindset change with the people so that they can proactively uh, walk forward to achieve that, that nice structure or the nice uh, uh, thing that they have built as their future. So okay. I kind of, as a life coach, I also support people with, when they're going through ups and downs in life, in challenging situations in their lives, to help them to find their own solutions themselves. Right. And we don't own that. It's the journey of the person, the coach's journey. As a coach, what you do is you support them, you hold, hold their hands during hard times, but it's always their decisions. They are forming their own future and the ownership is theirs. We just only do a supportive role. Okay, so it's basically go beyond the counselling. It's about a coach who guide for someone to come out from a medical or a stressful situation. Now, many of us, especially the working, uh, uh, I would say the working employer and employees, yes. go through this stress and all these situations. And what they do is they think that, you know, you have to go and do a cholesterol test or something, mm. right? But how this life coaching can help them to come out from this stress? Yeah, actually, Sulakshana, uh, though I never anticipated to become a life coach at the very beginning in my life or my career, to me today, I am far better doctor because I am a co life coach as well okay. myself. Because I can see the... Because of that, I can easily understand the other person's, uh, you know, what is in their heart, what, what are their restrictions, what is holding them. And that helps me in my exploring journey as a medical doctor, it has, it has helped me a lot. And I think it's, um, the, the, what, it, what is important for people is to understand the fluidity in our life. So, let's say you may be getting stressed today, but tomorrow it may not be the same. Tomorrow is yeah. another new day, yes. right? So what we go through these fluid circles and so yes, we will go through ups and downs in our life, but they will always pass. So it is not going to be the same for the rest of your life. But I think that fluidity is something people uh, struggle with because of that stressfulness. We find uh, a lot of us, we get really bound to those stresses. We think those are, we don't see them as passing, going off things. We always see them as bounding us into a certain place. We can't get out, things like that. But it's a more, if you can look at certain things, when you are stressed, sometimes there is a problem that you are encountering, but the answer or the solution is also within you. It hasn't yes. come up. Yeah. So it's just an exploration time that you will go through that stressful time. And you can use it positively majority of the time you can use it positive. you're feeling like that because there's something that is not right whether it has um, contradicted your values and ethics which is why you are either feeling that or there may be an issue with another person which you don't want to outright talk through uh, maybe you don't want to communicate because of the other things or it might just be that our traditions and our culture is holding us to be mm -hmm. to those beliefs which are not actually ours, but those were taught to us and we were put into a frame and we have already started to believe in that frame, within that. So I think knowing... The perceptions that, has been there. Yes, and we are being trained, right? From the time that you're born as a child, a lot of people influence us from our parents, to the teachers, to our friends, to relatives, to our co-workers. But it's always good to also question us, are we feeling, is this my own knowledge? Am I feeling 
what I should be feeling or am I like working under certain frames, right? So those kind of things will help us to understand and look at this stress in a slightly different way. So, I mean, I, what I would like a few quick steps, uh, quick uh, tips if needed for ladies like uh, who are maybe feeling stressed in these corporate settings. Uh, first is knowing that uh, none of us can be perfect. I love that. Yes, that's something I, I that. always believe. I mean, that is one of the key things that drew me to this program as well, Solution. I love that because people should learn to be real, not to be perfect. And knowing that we all make mistakes and that's, that's part and parcel of who we are, right? It's just maybe a mistake by our standards who probably would have defined those standards for us. So then uh, the other thing is trying to use the look at the stress as in fluidity, you know, it is not going to be the same situation. Okay. And be a little bold sometimes if you are, there are certain things which uh, with other people that you, uh, that is putting you under stress, communicate, right? I mean, ask for help. Ask for help, absolutely. And I myself think it's always good Solochana to have at least two or three people who, whom you can open up. Because we as women who work in management, who work in all our you know, thousands yeah. of things, balancing a career, balancing a house, balancing kids. It's very important for us to have those few key people who are genuinely interested in us, whom we can turn to them to talk if we need an extra, you know, hearing uh, or an objective kind of an ear. Right. As you clearly said, have one or two people whom we can trust and open up. Yeah. And you don't need to be perfect all the time because we are humans, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. And, uh, be honest to yourself rather than be honest to anyone else. Yes. So, Dr. Charuni, what you actually spoke was beyond the medical practitioners. I would say beyond the medical terms we are used to because you yeah. said, you know, it's not just giving you a prescription, but there is something hidden. There is a past for everyone. Mm. And when you treat the past, you can help the present and the future, mm. right? So before we end up, I just want a message from you, Dr. Chan, because many of us look at, we want to go to a doctor at the last moment, mm. right? We, we always think we are healthy, we are okay. But when the, the, the bell rings, only we goes. Mm. So if someone like that is listening to us or yeah. watching this video, what is your message to them? Thank you very much, Sulochan. I love that question. And so I just want this message probably to all those women who are listening to this program. Just know your health matters. And if you don't take responsibility for yourself, no one else will. So it's your responsibility to look after your health and every single thing. Say for example, our back, it's a core for us, right? Our whole body. If you don't take care of your back, if you're going to have lots of back pains and other issues in your life, Obviously, that is going to affect your uh, productivity, your performance and your mood. Simple yeah. as that. And then you are we are talking a whole lot about our mental health and lots of other things. But if you don't pay attention to our body, which is our, uh, the, the way, which is our, how people see us, you know, that again will be like, it will affect your confidence if we are sick falling sick or falling short of certain things and illnesses that comes to us as chronic because we don't care. Those little things will make a huge difference, Rochana. So coming back to those, you know, eating healthy, taking your daily exercise, if not daily, at least three times a week, you know, 30 minute walk. That's all you need. You don't need a, to go to a gym or a lot of aerobics if you don't have time. But at least a walk in your backyard, that's more than enough, right? That's how our grandparents, grandmothers used to do that. They used to walk in those backyards to get the coconut, right? To come back and cook. So those little things, you know, we, and have a little bit of your me time as well. It's very important to look after your own mental health, but physical health, don't wait until you get signs and symptoms and then you have to go to a doctor and when you check all those parameters are really right, you know, uh, have gone haywire. You need to intervene daily very little. If you intervene to take care of yourself, uh, if you take a look at your stress reduction methods, if you do your annual checkups, if you can just do your walking or get your exercises, you eat healthy. Once in a while, of course, you can eat from outside and, and, and a place that you like. 
that way you can actually enjoy the life that you live now for a longer time otherwise you're going to be a victim to a lot of medications which is like you'll have to for a long years you'll be under medication and that itself will also bring in a lot of side effects and a uh, lot of money will be wasted as well right so i think it's very crucial that we look after ourselves particularly as a woman because uh, you will be the also the one who will uh, set the example for your family your kids yes right and for their whole future whole future yeah so today she said don't wait for the last moment and she also said don't wait for prescriptions and she said my time me time matters a lot today our guest was dr charuni sena nayaka health educator and a life coach this is plenty with sulo let's be